Welcome to Happy Homes and Gardens. I'm your host. My name is Daphne Royce. I am a real estate broker, architecture, and interior designer. The crepe is a food you will likely have when you visit countries in Europe, especially France. The crepe suits everyone's taste buds because of the variety of uh, selections. I'm excited to have Ima Bengana here to share with us everything you ever wanted to know about crepes. Good morning, Ima. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Please tell us who you are and how did you start the movies? So my name is Iman and I live in Mill Valley, Marin County, California, and I started the creperie, which is called Millie's, um, kind of as a COVID like passion project. We, my mother and I actually ran a restaurant that is very well known around this community because we just created a community out of it in Stinson Beach and it was called the Siren Canteen. And we did actually serve crepes there in the beginning, but it was typically Mexican food and we had very great ingredients and it was a big production that lasted about seven years. And then right before COVID, we had to shut down because we are renting through the National Park Service and they're doing this long, like tear down rebuild project. So my mom and I thought, what can we do? because we can't open the siren anywhere else because it was right on the beach and it was a beautiful location. So we had these crepe pans and we decided let's open a little creperie and kind of tie in our life and our love for Paris in Mill Valley. So if you're ever in Mill Valley and you want a little taste of Paris, you could just come to the Mill Valley Lumberyard and we have a little space there and we offer all you can eat crepes. Please share with us the type of French cuisine and French people prepare their food. So in Paris, especially, so I lived in Paris for uh, four to five years. I was actually born there as well. So I moved back there in college and Paris is one of those cities that one, the food is absolutely delicious and incredible and all the ingredients are very fresh. You can never get a better baguette or any piece of bread than in France. It's fresh and warm. And I just take a baguette on the go when I go to class and I just eat the whole thing. And that's very, you know, stereotypical French, but you see people doing it everywhere. Um, of course, the cheese plates are amazing. But my favorite thing in Paris was after school, I would go to the market. There's always a fresh market nearby, either my school or my apartment. I would pick up simple ingredients. And then I would have all my friends come to my house and we would do dinner parties. So I hosted big Thanksgiving dinners because they don't celebrate Thanksgiving over there, but they appreciate having a big meal. Um, we made a lot of beautiful pastas. Um, and I have a lot of friends that are great at, at cooking. So we rotated and we made these amazing, fabulous dinners. I remember this one, my friend made crepes actually, and she did a sweet cheese with some caramelized onions and, and mushrooms and some apricot jam. And it was just fabulous with a side of bone broth. And we love to do, you know, experimental meals. So, but the beauty of Paris is really going out with your friends and sitting at a patio and drinking wine and having long discussions until one in the morning. And then you're like, okay, I have to go to bed. I have school in the morning. And then you just do it again and again. And the whole joy of slowing down, slowing down your meal, taking bite by bite and having your sip of wine, not indulging, but enjoying is really the true aspect of, of French cuisine. What is a sweet cheese? I don't know the name of it, but she, she made it for, I'm not, I'm not familiar with my cheeses, but it was kind of like a, a sheep cheese, but it was the way it was made and fermented was on the sweeter end. So it had this really nice texture and taste that went along with this, like the richness of mushrooms. I don't know. I'll have to find the name. What crabs do you have in France? 
Yeah. Well, there's everything. I'm um, so at my creperie, I model it after what you would find on the streets of Paris. So a typical French savory crepe, we call them a galette because it's made on a buckwheat batter. It's fully gluten-free and it's not, it's, they don't make it to be gluten-free. It's just the original crepe was made in um, Brittany and the seeds that for the flour that they grow there is buckwheat flour. So it's darker, it's more earthy tasting. It's, it's, it's grainy, but delicious. And so you would pair that with something savory along the lines of a Imontel um, Swiss cheese, ham, tomato. Um, you could add an egg on there. That's a crepe complet. That's what they call them. And for a sweet crepe, you would use a different, a different type of batter. We call it a sweet batter. It's more, it's whole wheat. So it's not gluten-free. It's a whole wheat batter with sugar and salt and butter and eggs and milk. And you mix it all together. And of course you can't go wrong with Nutella and strawberry. I make like 30, 50 of those a day. It's insane. Um, but my favorite sweet crepe is a sugar, lemon, and butter. It's very simple. And what I love about the ones that we prepare at Millie's is that, I, so I try to create a community in my space. And so I have a lot of neighbors that have these huge Meyer lemon trees and they have, they produce so many lemons a day that they don't know what to do with them. So I always offer trades. If you have a bunch of lemons, bring them by and I'll make you some crepes. And we, you know, sit down and converse and hang out. And so when I eat my sugar, lemon and butter crepe at Millie's, I know that the lemon I'm squeezing in there is from a tree from my friend Bonnie's house or Michelle's house, like whoever it is. It's so it's very simple. And that's what I love about the French cuisine as well as it's not piled on ingredients. You wouldn't find, you wouldn't find at my creperie pesto and chicken and basil, which sounds good, but you know, you'd find just cheese, tomato, which I get at the farmer's market, some ham. Um, there's a savory sweet option that is really nice. It's a goat cheese, walnut pear, and a little honey. And I think that pairs really nicely with a glass of cider. Now we know what's your favorite sweet crab. What is your favorite savory crab? So my favorite savory one is probably, especially in the morning, um, just an egg, ham, and cheese. And then I like to add a little chives on top to give it a little onion taste. It's really delicious. That one isn't fully on the menu, but I always suggest it to people. And then people come by all the time and ask for the Iman special. And I'm like, happy to do it. But yeah. I like it. Very Iman special. special. The Iman special. Yeah. It's very delicious. I read on your website the stories of your mother and you in Resident Bath Beach in Delaware. Mm -hmm. We should share some of your memories with us. Yes, I've spent the majority of my life in Rehoboth Beach. So I, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And so I was born in Paris. I moved to Pittsburgh. And every summer, our whole entire family, which is a lot of us, drive to Rehoboth Beach, which is about an eight-hour drive. It's on the coast. It's a little beach town. You know, we stay in these houses. And it's so fun because as a kid, I would take my bike and bike up one street, down another, and my family's on every single, we just took over the whole beach. And so we've been doing that for about, the family's been doing it for over 45 years. So when my mom was about eight years old, she, that's when they discovered Rehoboth Beach. And she and her cousin James were biking alongside the roads, just like I did. And they found this little hotel. It's like this really old fashioned, beautiful hotel with a little creperie on the side. And it was called the Crep Suzette. And it was run by this Parisian woman named Constance, which is now, she is now one of my closest family friends. And so as an eight-year-old, my, my mother would show up and say, can I work at this creperie? I love Nutella, you know? And of course they just let her join. And she, she started hanging out around the Crepery a lot. She would bike there. It was a very independent, you know, little town. Kids could go wherever there was no cars or, you know, you could just bike along anywhere. And so year by year, she started 
becoming more a part of the business. She started working there in summers. She used to take off time from work and go and work there. And eventually that just became part of our life. You know, we would go to Rehoboth every year. Us as kids would stop by the creperie and have some crepes. And it was always my mom's dream to open her own creperie. And that's part of why we opened it today. Um, but we still see Constance all the time. She moved to Paris and she started her own little restaurant out there. And the creperie is still around in Rehoboth. It's now owned by some different people, but there's always French people working there. So even in the middle of Delaware, it's fun to go and speak French with some local Parisians and just get a taste of their menu, which we actually modeled ours after. So our menus are pretty similar, which is cute. Can you share the differences between Rehoboth Beach and Stenson Beach? It's a good question. I feel like they're very different. Um, but to me personally, I have ties to both of them because um, I've spent so much of my life in both of the places. Um, Stinson is is very small and it's very charming and it used to be full of locals. And I think the similarity between Rehoboth and Stinson nowadays, which in my opinion is a little unfortunate is that Stinson is becoming a little more of a vacation spot and rentals where Rehoboth beach is that's always what it's been. Um, Rehoboth beach is definitely a tourist destination. People go there from all over the East coast, a lot of people from DC go there because it's only a three hour bus ride and you would stay in these big rentals. So it's a big family oriented place. You, you typically go with a huge family, you rent a big house, spend a lot of money on the rentals. It's There's a boardwalk, um, there's an amusement park on the boardwalk, which we called Funland. We'd go there as kids all the time. Um, and the beaches were definitely, people all around the East Coast typically go to Rehoboth and they go in big families and they rent these giant houses and vacation there for one to two weeks. Typically around 4th of July is a really busy time to go. And then in the winter, it's pretty quiet because there's not many locals that live there. Stinson used to be very hippie, very local friendly. And lately, especially during the pandemic, a lot of the houses have been bought by people in San Francisco and now turned into rental homes. So we're losing a little bit of that local scene in Stinson, but it's still there. Um, working there for seven years, I really got to know all the locals and it really feels like a smaller, more intimate community than Rehoboth. But Rehoboth is great. I mean, us as kids, it was a great place to grow up. We had a boardwalk with a amusement park and there was a band stance every night. There was different art, like, op like live music. And so, yeah, very different, but very similar. Also the water is very different. It's very warm in Rehoboth, very cold instance. The waves aren't that big, I guess. I guess that's the difference is the waves. Yeah, the waves, yeah. And the water temperature. In Delaware, it's much warmer because it's on the Atlantic. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no surfers in, you don't find surfers really in Rehoboth. I feel like the waves aren't, I'm not a surfer, but they don't look surfable. Um, where Stinson, it's a great place for people to learn how to surf and yeah, but you got to be careful because there are sharks there. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, you want to be careful. If you see seals, you're okay. If you don't see any seals, maybe avoid the water for a little. That's a good sign to know. Yeah. All right, let's go back to the crepes. <laughs> How do you make your batter? What is your batter better than others? Good question. You know, I honestly just made up my batter when I first opened Millie's. So a few weeks before our opening date, I said, I should probably come up with a batter recipe. So I made a batch and I just made some crepes for the local people in Mill Valley and everyone like approved with two thumbs up. They're like, this is amazing. Let's stick with it. So I do 
my secret ingredients. I just do flour. Um, I use a really good baker's flour with eggs, a little salt, a little sugar, milk, water, um, butter. And the trick is you got to leave it overnight. So a lot of people tell me that they try to make crepes at home, but they don't turn out okay. They either break or they taste a little, I don't know, whatever. But I say you always have to leave them in the fridge for at least 24 hours or 12 hours. So that's what we do. And it was amazing because like one of my friends visiting from Paris actually came the other week and tried one of my crepes. And he said that by far my crepes were the best he's ever had, which I think is the ultimate compliment I've ever received that a Parisian guy is telling me that I made amazing crepes. So yeah. So the trick is really to just let it sit and, and yeah. Do you make any gluten free or all the batter are the same? Yeah. So the buckwheat batter is the gluten-free batter. So that one could be used for any crepe. You could use that for sweet or savory. Um, the regular batter is not unfortunately because it's whole wheat batter but if anyone's celiac I just wipe the pans down because my aunt is celiac and she comes by all the time so it's pretty simple to remove any sort of gluten from the space yeah and how many favorites of crepes that you have in your restaurant community so of course we make Nutella strawberry crepes all the time. Kids love those and adults too. But I have, I love when kids come after, after school and you start to get to know them because like I mentioned before with my older, my other restaurant in Stinson beach, it was more Stinson locals. And then a bunch of like vacationers that just go there in the summer. So I didn't really get a sense of, I didn't, I didn't meet a lot of locals um, that were children. And so in, in Mill Valley, there's a ton of kids, there's schools all over the place. So kids come after school, after sports, and they order Nutella strawberry crepes. And sometimes they sit inside and we get chatting and it's kind of fun to be like, I feel like a mentor for all these kids and they're just sitting there eating their Nutella. So definitely that one. And I would say the goat cheese walnut pear honey is also a very popular one with a little bit of arugula that one's really good that's a savory right well yes. that's a sweet that's a savory one but it's nice because with the honey it has a little bit of sweetness so if you're not a super sweet tooth that's a perfect combination and if you want it to be a little more peppery that's when I add the arugula and it tastes and it's the savory ones are so filling that I always recommend sharing them with a friend and then getting a sweet one after so um, my space is definitely, I, I want it to be a space where you go with friends and family and, and you sit down and it's all about sharing. And if you come alone, happy to sit with you and talk with you as well. That's very nice. <laughs> so we have a lot of slow days, so it's nice to sit down and like meet new people. Can people make a custom made crepes if they yeah. have a certain preferences? Yeah. Depends on what we have on the menu. Yeah, we bake. Um, a lot of people like to customize their own crepes. The other day I made one. They like added a bunch of different fruits and butter and sugar. And that sounds good, you know. Um, and yeah, if people and also some people have asked for avocado and I don't have avocado. So I'm just like, oh, if you want to bring me an avocado, happy to put it in your crepe. Because what's great about Millie's is when you walk in the front door, you see the pans, you see me like making the food in front of you. So if you want to bring me some ingredients, happy to throw it in. So what are the most ordered crepes? Um, I mean, they're all, so I have a pretty big menu, but they're all just variations of the same thing. So I definitely make a lot of ham and cheese, a lot of Nutella, um, the sugar lemon butter is definitely a big one, especially because I have this giant bowl of like natural, um, Meyer lemons with like the leaves still sticking out and stuff on the counter. So I think a lot of people want that in their crate. It's very like beautiful to look at and my favorite to taste. So definitely that one as well. Oh, well, it sounds like you have all the French ingredients for your crepes. Would you? 
ever want to convert your crepes to American fusion recipe? I don't know. I don't think so because I feel like everyone does that. And I really want to stick to the authentic French culture that is crepes. Um, I was thinking recently that I wanted to maybe add sandwiches onto the menu and do so in Paris my favorite thing to eat in the morning was a jambon beurre it's a it's a fresh baguette with just some butter and ham and that's it and it was delicious and I eat them all the time and so I really want to bring that into Millie's so that could be the side that I could maybe make some Americanized sandwiches but in terms of crepes I think the simpler the better and the more authentic is the way I go. Yeah. I love French breakfast. It is really different than the American breakfast. It's so good. And everything's so fresh there. I mean, even here, if I was going to make the jambon beurre sandwiches, the bread is just not going to be the same as Paris, but that's okay. Because there's still some amazing bakeries over in this area. But I just love, and you can tell that everything's so fresh in France, like, or in Europe in general, like when you go to a supermarket to get some eggs, you're not going to find them in the refrigerator. You're probably going to find them on the, on a shelf next to some paper towels. And I don't know, whatever, because they're not, they're, I guess they're unpasteurized there. I don't, I don't really know the difference. Most stuff. Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. cheese, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And the milk as well. Yeah. I just said, I love the farmer's markets in France. They're, they're great. They're great. And the beautiful, they're colorful to visit, even though you don't buy anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Would you consider adding restaurants in different locations in the Bay Area? Yes, actually, I'm thinking of expanding for sure. I want to open at least five, maybe more, who knows. Um, I was approached about opening in San Francisco um, in the uh, Ghirardelli Square, which I think would be a great location. It would just be very, um, we'd have to definitely get a bigger staff for that place. I think Sonoma would be an amazing spot too, especially on the square. You could get a crep and then some wine tasting and walk around. And, but I definitely want to expand in Marin. I think Marin, there's, I'm the only crepery besides Crepe Vine, which is the larger establishment in San Rafael. And so, yeah, but they sell other things. So I think I'm quite literally the only crepery in Marin. So if I could expand that and have one in Sausalito, have one in Tiburon, maybe Corte Madera or Larkspur, I think that would be the first step. And then once those get off the ground, I would move on to the city. Okay. Sure. Yeah. That, that means I, have to travel, I have to travel to find you. You have to travel to find me. Yeah. That'd be amazing. That amazing. You have one at one stores. So I would definitely, definitely visit yeah. many, many times. What's fun about the, the store that I'm in now is it's actually, so it's not its own brick and mortar. It's in a lumberyard that was, it was a lumber yard and then it was transported into um it's now transformed into a shopping mall so there's another restaurant in there there's a bakery and there's all these cute little shops and jewelry stores so you could always go get a crepe sit in the sun which I did yesterday and it was amazing because we had awful storms the last few days so yesterday was a beautiful day to sit in the sun and then um yeah you could pick up your crepe walk around buy some jewelry, get some candles, get a coffee. So it's a nice little, air, like, it's a nice little daily thing you could do. It's you great know. to do it today too. It's beautiful it's out today. there. It's beautiful today. Yeah. Sunny. Hopefully it lasts. Please tell us how people can find you, find your restaurants and what your store hours are. So our store hours are currently right now 10 a.m. to 6, but because of the time change and it's getting lighter later, I think I might open later. So 
don't check my website because I'm not good at editing that thing. Just go on Google because I always change the hours on there. Um, Because I know a lot of people complain that the hours on my website don't match my actual hours. So I always tell people just check Google because that is the most, I update that all the time. You can find me on Instagram, Millie's Crep and Creme, um, or just type in Millie's. I should be the first to pop up a um, little blue tile uh, logo. I don't know. And on the website, it's Millie's Crepe and Cream, C-R-E-M-E dot com. Yeah. Great. Sounds like you have a longer hours in the summertime than the winters. Yeah. So in the winter, we closed at 5 p.m., but in the summer, I think I might push till 8 this year. Yeah. Now that we have more help. Do you have any um, like festival around you and like special holidays you will extend your hours? I'm willing to extend my hours for any certain thing. Um, I've had a lot of people reach out to me wanting to do private events. So I've done, I've closed to the public before and opened later for other people. I've also just stayed open later. If someone said, oh, a group of 20 of us really want to come, but we can't come till later. It depends on the day. It depends on the, um, but there are festivals for sure in Mill Valley. I'm also, I do, I celebrate Millie's birthday every year. So Millie turned one. So we opened in September of 2021. So in September of 2022, I had live music. I passed out free craps and I made this whole fun ambiance party. Um, We all wore like happy birthday hats for Millie and it was super cute. So I'm going to do it again this summer. So I think around September, um, September 3rd is her birthday, but I might do it because that's Memorial Day or Labor Day weekend. So I might do it on August 30th, but anyone's welcome to come. I'm going to post about it on my Instagram when it's coming up, but we're going to do live music and I'm just going to pass out craps and make it a beautiful day. So nice of you. Yeah. I like events. I like parties. Okay. Um, I also wanted to mention that we have wine and beer so and hard kombucha. So if you want to come during the day and have brunch, um, I can make mimosas. I can do sparkling wine. We have a really great rosé. Yeah, it's a fun time. It sounds wonderful. Wonderful. Do you cater at other people's location? I wish I could. I need to get one of those... Um, uh, gas pans because right now mine you have to plug into the wall and you need a very specific type of cord so right now I can't cater but I always offer if people don't mind coming to Millie's I'm happy to yeah either do it before or after my hours or we could close to the public depending on the situation and eventually yes I will focus on catering because I think it'd be really fun to do it at someone's house I think that will be big hits for birthday party. Yeah, or, right. Or a graduation or, or kids' parties yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Kids' parties, work events, happy to go to an office. Yeah, anything. Crepes are great for any sort of day. It's a light, but it's filling. Yeah, exactly. You could have like a little bite of everything and be fine. Thank you so much, Eman, for this wonderful, um, informative interview. And Thank I really you. appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Hope everyone can come to Millie's and try some crops. And happy to meet you all. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.